Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for joining. And uh, we shall continue. We're talking about uh, we we're talking about King Nabi last time. Now we are going to talk about his son. And this uh, supreme personality, God Himself, has taken birth in their home, which uh, they wanted. And uh, now today we'll also talk about the supreme personality, God, and that's Rishibadev. So, when Rishibadev appeared as the son of Maharaj Nabi, he was appreciated by the people as the most exalted and beautiful personality of that age. His poise, influence, strength, enthusiasm, bodily luster, <coughs> excuse me, and other transcendent qualities were beyond compare. Now the word Rishabh refers to the best or the supreme. Due to the super excellent attributes of the son of Maharaj Nabi, the king named his son Rishabh or the best. So you see him best from the beginning, you know, this, so they named him that. Uh, his influence was incomparable. Although there was a scarcity of rain, Rishabhadev didn't care for Indra, the king of heaven, who's in charge of supplying rain. Through his own potency, Rishabhadev sumptuously covered Ajinab. That's the <clears throat> place where he ruled with ample rain. Upon receiving Rishabhadev, who is the supreme person regarded as his son, King Nabi began to raise him very carefully. After that, he entrusted the ruling power to him and retiring from family life, lived at Badrik Ashram, completely engaged in the worship of Vasudev, the Supreme Lord. It's amazing. He has, the Supreme Lord has his son, but yet he goes to Badrik Ashram to engage in the worship of Vasudev. And this is because to follow social customs, and also, Rishibadev, to follow social customs, uh, for a while became a student in the Gurukul. And after returning, he followed the orders of his guru and accepted a wife named Jayanti. So this is the system. They want to stick to the system. They want to stick to the rules. So everybody else will also follow the rules. And they don't point fingers and say, no, you know, they, somebody's beyond the rules of uh, this planet or this material world. So Jayanti, who had been given to him by the king of heaven, Indra, he begot a hundred sons in the womb of Jayanti. Of these hundred sons, the eldest was known as Bharat. Now we're talking about uh, personalities that we are very familiar with. Bharat, since the reign of Maharaj Bharat, this planet has been called Bharat Varsh. So Prabhupada mentions this planet but uh, we just know India as Bharat, and now, now they're trying to make the, take the name back to Bharat for, in, from India, uh, as it's called now. They want to bring it back to the old name, Bharat. Watch. Let's pray. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kruti Vachalam. Pangum Langyate Grim. Yat Kirpata Munde. Shri Guru Din Taranam. Pramnam da madam, she is the nation of Harion, the Sat Nara Namaskritya Naram Cheva and Rotum, Devim Sasvias, and Tatoja Maduri yet Nasta Prishava Badreshu, Nitam Bhagavat Savia, Bhagavati Uttam Shloke, Bhakti Bhavati Nestaki, Hare Krishna. Shri Shukde Gomi said, Gosomi said, As soon as the Lord was born as the son of Maharaj Nabi. He manifested his symptoms of the Supreme Lord, such as marks on the bottoms of his feet, the flag, thunderbolt, etc. This son was equal to everyone and very peaceful. He could control his senses and his mind, and possessing all opulence, he did not hanker for material enjoyment. Endowed with all these attributes, the son of Maharaj Nabi became more powerful day after day, Due to this, the citizens, learned, learned Brahmins, demigods, and ministers wanted Rishabhadev to be appointed ruler of the earth. So he certainly made an impact on everyone, to all the citizens and the Brahmins and the demigods as well. 
So, you know, this is amazing because sometimes uh, to please one, you end up upsetting the other one. But in the case of Rishibadev, he pleased everyone. When the son of Maharaj Nabi became visible, he evinced all good qualities described by the great poets. Namely, these qualities are well-built body with all the symptoms of the Godhead, prowess, strength, beauty, name, fame, influence, enthusiasm. When the father, Maharaj Nabi, saw all these qualities, he taught his son to be the best of human beings or the, or the supreme being. Now, Indra, the king of heaven, who is very materially opulent, became envious of King Nav, Rishabhadev. <coughs> That's uh, quite common with uh, Indra. He gets worried very quickly. Consequently, he stopped pouring water on the planet known as Bharatvarsh. At that time, the Supreme Lord, Rishabhadev, the master of all mystic power, understood King Indra's purpose and smiled a little. Then by his own prowess, through Yoga Maya, his internal potency, he profusely poured water upon his own place, which was known as Ajanab. So sometimes, well, you know, it may seem like uh, Indra, you know, he's under illusion or, you know, he's, he's doing um, things uh, contrary to his uh, position. But, you know, it helps the Lord to do some pastimes as well and you know we can glorify the lord the through his pastime you got uh, govardhan parents day coming soon and again indra was uh, involved in that <clears throat> and indra actually although there's a lot of nonsense going on but indra was actually praised by the lord for setting up this pastime because he gave the devotees an opportunity to come together with krishna for seven days and seven nights. Um, so in in the end, you know, it, it became a good thing that because anything that brings you closer to the Lord, it can't be bad, right? Due to getting a perfect son according to his desire, King Nabi was always overwhelmed with transcendental bliss and was very affectionate to his son. It was with ecstasy and a faulting voice that he addressed him. My dear son, my darling, this mentality was brought about by Yoga Maya, whereby he accepted the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Father, as his own son. Out of his supreme goodwill, the Lord became his son and dealt with everyone as if were an ordinary human being. Thus, King Nabi began to raise his son with great affection, and he was overwhelmed with transcendental bliss, joy, and devotion. <clears throat> so, considering the Supreme Person got it to be his own son, Maharaj Nabi was certainly in illusion. But this was transcendental illusion. This illusion is required. Otherwise, how can one accept the Supreme Father as his own son? So, the Lord is everyone's father. <coughs> we are his children. But just like Nand Maharaj, Yashoda Mai, he can put into illusion, we start thinking that he is uh, their child. The Supreme Lord appears as the son of one of his devotees, just as Lord Krishna appeared as the son of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. These devotees could never think of the son as a Supreme Person regarded, for such appreciation would hamper the relationship of parental love. So whatever rasa you have, what that you are attracted to, Krishna arranges that you start thinking in that way that Krishna is your lover, is your parent, is your child, uh, a lover, friend, uh, your child, like that. Uh, so you know, the only you can only do this if uh, you know if you see Krishna. From that aspect, if you just see him as God, then uh, you would never be able to have that uh, that uh, friendship with him. It's like when Arjun, you know, was, was saw the Virat Roop, you know, he was like shocked and thinking, "Oh, Krishna, uh, I have been so modest. Uh, I have been so open with you, you know, just like friends. Uh, I have 
treated you and uh, you know teased you on many occasions, may have even insulted you, but you are really are the supreme person, the Godhead, and uh, I, you know we should be like just giving you awe and reverence. But Krishna doesn't want that; he wants you to do your rasa that uh, you are attracted to. King Nabi understood that his son Rishibadev was very popular among the citizens and among government officers and ministers. Understanding the popularity of his son, Maharaj Nabi enthroned him as the emperor of the world to give protection to the general populace in terms of the Vedic religious system. To do this, he entrusted him into the hands of learned Brahmins who would guide him in administrating the government. Then Maharaj Nabi and his wife Meru Devi went to Badri Kashram in the Himalaya mountains where the king engaged himself very expertly in austerities and penances with great jubilation. In full samadhi, he worshipped the Supreme Person of Godhead, Narnarayan, who is Krishna in his plenary expansion. By doing so, in course of time, Maharaj Nabi was elevated to the spiritual world known as Vaikuntha. So Maharaj Nabi, being confident that his son could rule the citizen, he was safe in his hands, left as the, the saintly kings used to in those days. And it, his wife went with him and they worshipped the Lord, purified themselves completely from uh, illusion of material, material life. And once they purified, they went back, back to Vaikuntha. When Maharaj Nabi saw that his son Rishabhadev was very popular with the general populace and development, he chose to install him on the imperial throne. In addition, he wanted to entrust his son into the hands of land Brahmins. This means that a monarch was supposed to give govern strictly according to Vedic principles. Why else would he uh, uh, you know, entrust him to Brahmins? The Brahmins could tell him about the Vedic principles that they should be following. Who could advise him according to the standard Vedic scriptures like Manu Smriti and Simla Shastras? So Manu Smriti that tells us you know how 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 we should live our lives, how we should behave. <clears throat> it is the duty of the king to rule the citizens according to Vedic principles. According to Vedic principles, society is divided into four categories: Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, Chaturvarnya, Maya, Srishtam. Guna Karma Vagasha. So divided into four. It is the king's duty to see that everyone executes, executes Vedic principles according to his caste. A Brahman must perform the duty of Brahman without cheating the public. It is not that one attains the name of Brahman without the qualifications. It is the king's duty to see that everyone engages in his occupational duty according to Vedic principles. In addition, retirement end of life is compulsory. Maharaj Nabi, although still a king, retired from the family life <clears throat> and went with his wife to a place called Badrik Ashram in the Himalayas, where the deity Narayan is worshipped. Despite undergoing severe scholarly penalties, he felt very pleased at Badrik Ashram and he did everything there expertly. In this way, being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> Always thinking of Krishna, Vasudev Maharaj Nabi attained success, success at the end of his life and was promoted to the spiritual world by Kuntalok. So Maharaj Nabi left the material world <clears throat> and uh, Sukhdev Goswami is saying, Oh Maharaj Prikshit, to glorify Maharaj Nabi, the old sage is composed two verses. One of them is this. Who can attain the perfection of Maharaj Nabi? Who can attain his activities? Because of his devotional service, the Supreme Person of Godhead agreed to become his son. If work is not carried out in devotional service, it is contaminated by the modes of material nature. This is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Activities performed only for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord are pure and are not contaminated by the modes of material nature. All other activities are contaminated by the modes of ignorance and passion as well as goodness. All material activities meant for satisfying the senses are contaminated. And Maharaj Nabi did not perform anything contaminated 
He simply executed his transcendental activities even when performing yajna. Consequently, he obtained the Supreme Lord as his son. So anything we do for our own senses is considered contaminated by the three modes of nature. Anything we do for the Lord's senses is free of all contamination. <clears throat> and, and is free of all reactions, material reactions as well, sinful reactions. And the second praise is, who is better worshipper of Brahmas than Maharaj Nabi? Because he worshipped the qualified Brahmas to their full satisfaction. The Brahmanas, by their Brahmanical prowess, showed Maharaj Nabi, the Supreme Person of God, died in person. So after Nab Maharaj Nabi departed for Badrik Asham, the Supreme Lord, Rishi Badev, understood that his kingdom was his field of activities. He therefore showed himself as an example and taught the duties of a householder by first accepting Brahmacharya under the direction of spiritual master. He also went to live at the spiritual master's place, Gurukul. After his education was finished, he gave gifts, which is like Guru Dakshina, to his spiritual masters and then accepted the life of a householder. He took a wife named Yanti, we got 100 sons who were very powerful, qualified as himself. His wife Yanti had been offered to him by Indra, the king of heaven. Rishibadev and Yanti performed householder life in an exemplary way, carrying out ritualistic activities ordained by the Shruti and Smriti Shastra. So the Lord comes and he does all these activities and he shows us, look, this is how things are done. That's how. You, that's the procedure that you should follow. So he sets an example. Being an incarnation of the Supreme Person and a Godhead, Rishabhadev had nothing to do with material affairs. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Vitranaya sadhuna vinashaya vinashaya ja duskritam. The purpose of an incarnation is to liberate his devotees and stop the demoniac activities of non-devotees. These are the two functions of the Supreme Lord when he incarnates. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said that in order to preach, one must live a practical life and show people how to do things. And this is what Maharaj Rishipadde <clears throat> did. He lived a practical life and show people how to do things. Although his Supreme Personality got it, and he, it was not necessary for him to do all this, but he did it just to show people how to do these things. One cannot teach others unless he behaves the same way himself. And you find that most of the time, people don't practice what they preach. Right? People preach a lot of things, but they don't think these rules and regulation and this practice or this life, it, does, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't affect them or these rules are, are not made for them. It's made for everybody else. And that's the that's what you see. That's the usual way. You know, everything, all the advice is for everyone, but themselves, they don't always follow. So it's like we've seen, uh, anyway, let's, let's not go into that. Uh, it's not about politics and things, but anyway, you know what I mean. One cannot teach others unless he behaves the same way himself. Vishibhadev was an ideal king, and he took his education in the Gurukul, Although he was already educated because the Supreme Lord is omniscient. Although Rishibadev had nothing to learn from Gurukul, he went there just to teach the people in general how to take an education from the right source, from Vedic teachers. He then entered householder life and lived according to the principles of Vedic knowledge, Shruti and Smriti. In his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa, Rupa Goswami quoting the Sikhan Puran states the human society <clears throat> must follow the instructions see from Shruti and Smriti, Vedic literature. <clears throat> Practically applied in life, this is worship of the Supreme Person of God. And according to the Panch Artika Vidhi, every human being must follow his uh, spiritual life and at the end return back home, back to Godhead. Maharaj Rishibhadev strictly followed all these principles. 
he remained an ideal grista and taught his sons how to become perfect in spiritual life. These are some examples of how he ruled the earth and completed his mission as an incarnation. <clears throat> so these are the examples given. And you know, God comes himself to teach us how to live life and what kind of things we need to do to advance in spiritual life so at the end of the day we can go back home. But unfortunately, most people don't know. You know, they, they just don't know what they have to do. You know, they, they are lost. And we are, you know, we're just learning. We're fortunate that at least we're getting some Shruti and Samriti to guide us uh, how to advance in spiritual life. A lot of people just don't don't even think about spiritual life. And, uh, you know, they have so many other agendas. They, are, they have so many addictions so many attachments and that they, they see that as their goal in life. Uh, if somebody is a heavy smoker, he doesn't want, you know, there's like things they can do to stop smoking, but they don't want to stop. Thinking, no, no, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing. This is my goal in life to enjoy. And even if you tell them that this, this is drinking or smoking, you know, it's all in the mind. It's, and they they are, they actually agree that the body doesn't need it. It's the mind that needs, you know, needs, it wants the satisfaction of smoking. Because if it's the nicotine, you can put the nicotine in your body with a patch. But now they want to smoke because the mind wants to hold a cigarette, wants to smoke. So <clears throat> everyone is, you know, they, they think that whatever the mind wants, that that is important to them. Not what you know about the soul or um, anything that you know that will take us back home or you know we give some advancement. Now, the main goal is to satisfy the mind, and this this is where we are. You know, this is where society is lost. Just trying to satisfy the mind, and the mind is the worst enemy. You know, it will take you to hell given the chance. <clears throat> of Shudev's one hundred sons, the eldest named Bharat was a great exalted devotee qualified with the best attributes. So if you set good examples for your children, your children will be great as well. In his honor, this planet has become known as Bhartvash. So you can see how exalted he was that, uh, you know, we, we the everything was known as Bharat at that time and is named after him. Nowadays, maybe one street Maybe your statue will be named after you, <laughs> but those are the whole, you know, the whole world was named after him. This planet known as Bhartvash is also called Punya Bhumi, the pious land. So Bharat is given a, a, a you know a lot of credit here, but uh, you know, do we actually do we have to contribute towards that? Are we doing things with that, you know, that 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 makes it punya bhumi and are we doing punya uh, karma yeah at the present moment bat bhumi or bat is a small piece of land extending from the himalaya mountains to cape comorin sometimes this peninsula is called punya bhumi sri chaitanya mahaprabhu has given special importance to the people of this land one who has taken his birth as a human being in the land of india should or bat varsh should make his life successful and work for the benefit of all other people. The inhabitants of this piece of land are very fortunate. They can purify the existence by accepting this Krishna consciousness movement and go outside Bharat Bhumi and preach this cult to the benefit of the whole world. So that that, that is the benchmark. You know that that is what we're looking for. But is that actually done? No, it's not done. We don't always uh, set good examples, right? Uh, the so, Prabhupada mentions that as Bharat Vashi or people of India of Indian origin, we have a great responsibility not to only to ourselves, not to a people of Bharat, but to the whole world. And Prabhupada realized that responsibility. He is a spiritual master. 
Bhakti uh, Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami realized that responsibility. That's why he sent him out to the Western worlds. You know that uh, as being, you know, we should we are fortunate that uh, you know we are Indian and we we if we can we can help the rest of the world because they really don't know. They follow their minds and they follow their senses and that's all they know. Right? You see all around us. That's all people. That this is all people are doing, just enjoying their mind and senses, and that's their goal of life. To uh, they have a bucket list, <laughs> how much they can enjoy till they, as I say, they kick the bucket till they die, and that 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 is, you know, that is enjoy, enjoy, enjoy until you drop, die with your boots on, enjoying, not helping anyone, just your own senses. So thank you all so much. Jai Prabhu, Praveen Mataji, Swashya Mataji, and Radharani, thank you all for joining. Yes, Madhavra, Venkat, Prabhu. Prabhu, thank you for joining. And Madhav Prabhu. Madhav Madhav Prabhu, thank you for being here. Let's just quickly go through this. Um, maybe Praveen Mataji, Jai Prabhu is listening. So Praveen Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam to everyone. That's very nice past time. Thank you for the class, Prabhuji. When you were reading all these thoughts were coming to me, how lucky we are. We were born in Bharatwash and we have come to abroad, you know, so we are very, very blessed. And now we have to do our duty. The Lord Chaitanya, he said, as an Indian, it is our duty to spread Krishna consciousness. And from uh, Nabi Maharaj, we see how he performed his duties well, because like in Bhagavad Gita, it says, you know, what a great man performs, the common man follow. So King Nabi, he performed his duties well. And also he's shown that he was not attached. So the Lord himself was born as a son. And he still, you know, went to Badrikashram for penances. So great lesson. So we have to teach others by actions, not just by words. And and how King Nabi, he brought up his son. So again, as parents, it's a duty to bring good children and and like to the society. So uh, I would like to read that text, uh, Bhagavad Gita 3.21, where it says, whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world first use. And previous to uh, that, uh, the verse 320 gives the example of King Janak. He attained perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. So, yeah, we have to do our duty. So, please give me your blessing, Prabhuji, so I can do something as well for Krishna consciousness and spread the word. Prabhuji's mission. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yeah, like, yeah, let's spread the word. Every town, every village, this is Lord Chaitanya yeah. wants, and he, yes, yeah. we definitely. Yeah. I don't know whether I shared because the two weeks ago, because there is a local church, and every time I like walk past and I see the sign because they've been inviting people, people who are struggling for meals. And I've been thinking, you know, I can do something, so I went to ask if I can cook. And then when I went, and then you know, because uh, I, I took my apron, my hat, and the lady was very happy. And then I said, well, yeah, we take care of, you know, this, I, this is what I do. We cook for congregations, and but we cook, we offer to the Lord, and then we eat. And so she was listening carefully. So when I finished my cooking, then I said to her, you can taste, and then, you, you know, before you serve, so at least, you know. She said, oh, no, no, you do what you do. You offer to Lord first, because I didn't want to use their plate, so there was foil. So I put rice and the curry on the foil and I did the prayer because in a pot, because I, I took my spices and everything. So I took the tulsi leaf and I offered and then we served. So there were like 80, 90 English people. So I felt really good. So I think I'm hoping to do it again in the modern month and I'll take the diaz so they can offer diaz as well. So Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mantaji. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, we can... Uh... As you say, teach people for the actions. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, just quickly, please guide me. So what I can say, so I can just tell them, I'll take the picture of, you know, that the, the picture we have with Yashoda and, you know, Krishna. 
and then I can just tell them just to make a wish for your know, peace or what you know rather than just saying too much. Yeah. So what can I tell them to do? You offer a lamp. Yeah, just to yeah, speak. yeah, yeah. I yeah. uh, just ask you know for now it's, it's enough that what what have you know I think uh, they they have to select the four types of people who come to Krishna. So uh, in the first instance, we have to bring them to Krishna. Yeah, uh, and then you know then if they can make a wish, and uh, if Krishna desires, he, he can make the hope is a good wish, and. Uh, yeah. You know, the wish come true, then they start believing. They have to start having confidence. Yes, yeah, so I can tell them. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I can tell them like there are four type of people who come, and I'll write it on a sheet, and which you know I'll give it to them so they can see, and then I'll say, right, you can see which category you want to be in, and just make <laughs> a good wish. <laughs> so I like a joke as well because they're like elderly English people, so because you don't want to be too serious, like it's in yeah. the church as well. Yeah. And I think just just telling them that uh, you know make, make, a make, make a wish, keep them happy, uh, and that, yeah. that's, that's philosophy fine. can follow. Philosophy yeah, yeah. can follow later. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Madhavi. Okay, so Jay Prabhu is saying similar. A few points of Shiva there. He was equal to everyone, very peaceful, and controlled his senses and his mind. He possessed the qualities of opulence of God. Yeah, and whatever action is performed by a great man. Come and follow. He showed himself to be an exemplary person, leader to his citizens through his education at Gurukul, his whole household life, and his spiritual practice, all in accordance with Shastra. Absolutely right. Thank you, Prabhu, uh, for finding that. Uh, because, yes, um, this is what Prabhupada has, Srila Prabhupada is telling us that we should live our life according to Shastra, because Shastra. We follow Shastra, then we're doing things properly and we're doing things to please the Lord. And otherwise, we're just pleasing our own senses, how we like, you know, whatever we like doing. Shastra is not going to say, you know, you smoke, you drink, you do this, do that, all these bad habits. So we just please in the mind. And because the, the my mind, is, you know, is, it, is, in, is like crazy, wants crazy things. You know, th there's no limit to his uh, expectations, you know, and they keep increasing. He gets bored, and then he wants something else, and he gets bored, then he wants something else. You know, where, where do you stop? And this life is very temporary, and, you know, we misuse it. Thank you so much. Sarvashriya Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna. Um, Lord Krishna, he comes in different incarnations and um, avatar. And uh, it's like he comes in Lila avatar, Guna avatar, and Sakti avatar. And uh, he comes just to show us how to live in this world. A uh, good example is Lord Dham, he said here, just how to, how to human beings should live, how can, um, how you can then be uh, have relationship with mother, father, brothers, and the subject. So he said there are even connection of Supreme Lord as well. So he told the sons, not only the sons, but all the subjects, how to become perfect in spiritual life and how to fold Dvarna Ashram, like, like Brahma, Satya, Vaishya, Sudra, in all ashrams, and once there is one purpose to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you do according to the quality of your ashram, not by death, but the Brahman churches nowadays sometimes they, they, think they can be a Brahman according to the death, but it has to be a quality of work. And um, Krishna conscious, there are many Vedas and Sastras, all of them show us how to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Vedas was very, he was kind to write the Sastras, and it all tells you how to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And um, we, should, we should engage our senses in serving Krishna. So if you 
if you don't engage your senses in favoring Krishna, then you will save Maya because our human nature or living at the tree, any nature, even the animals, they, they save. They save. Your know, nature is to save somebody. So instead of saving material nature, and we should uh, save Krishna. Or, or we should not uh, save Maya, but we should save Krishna. And um, that's what he says, that my name is to take everybody to Supreme Personality of God, back to Godhead. And uh, so we have to learn the lesson from what the text is in, uh, in Bhagavatam. We have a lesson that we should do that. We should follow the instruction of what the Shri Deva um, showed the subject. We should follow the... Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's what I can say. That, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony. They're telling us that just follow spiritual life. So we try to follow the spiritual life and try to avoid our material life and the spiritual life. That's what we take us to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. And you can see that it takes a lifetime to completely, because uh, I, I guess if if you if somebody followed a, a scripture life from, from the beginning, so it's nice, you know, if that's done. But for, you know, I'll give my own example that we're following our own mundane life, and then we want to follow scripture life, then we have to undo so many things, right? You know, we're turning our life upside down, but it's not upside down. It's the right way around. Now it was upside down. Now it's right way around. So you have to undo some of the that you're doing before and, and change your lifestyle completely. So, yeah, I, I, I guess if you can, you know, people who are living from day one, uh, this is what Krishna says, that if you don't succeed, you'll will, you will take birth in a good Brahman family who are already following. The, I mean, just because the Brahman doesn't necessarily mean they're all following this, but a good family, you know, that who is following, that's, that's the key, that who's following all the uh, Vedic uh, principles, then you know if you get the opportunity, then there's not much to change, uh, and then you can just continue smoothly. Yes. Yeah, Hare Krishna, everyone. Yeah, uh, Krishna has has taken uh, uh, pastimes in different different um, situations in different ashrams just to teach us that how we can easily you know glide through this life, just live it uh, without any uh, difficulty. It's, it's, the end of the day, now we understand it's just our mind, isn't it? We just have to just train our mind, and uh, mind can mind can be such a good friend if we train it to be good. It just we, we need to have good association. We need to have a. Uh, we need to be following the right things because everything is available in the world out there. Is what what we let our mind follow that will be that will become our life and that's how if you if one is in grastashram they can they'll be teaching the same thing to their kids because you teach your kids and around you not just by saying the spoken word is less powerful than the uh, that how you're living your life so god has given us so many examples god has taken birth in high low every kind of situation in every kind of family and uh, like Prabhupada said, just give one this life, give this life to Krishna, give give one 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 birth to Krishna, and see how much your soul is going to. Soul is already Sachidanand anyway. It's uh, full of knowledge, full of bliss, and full of it's it's eternal. But it'll it'll really go back to Godhead, and then it'll live its spiritual life. At the moment, we are just prisoned in this uh, material life, in this material body, which is so temporary and. Uh, Thanks to this material, you know, situation outside, we just start identifying with it. We, we forget that this is not our identity, but we have to remind ourselves uh, through these pastimes and through these classes. And uh, like Praveen Mataji was saying nicely that she got a chance to uh, do what she had learned 
that how to serve. And she didn't miss that opportunity when she got that opportunity. This is what we have to look around that how we can give. So effortlessly we can, through our skills, through our uh, qualities, we can give Bhagwan's name to everyone. It's not just confined to the people who will be coming to your congregation or to your uh, household. Outside also you can, she's now, she's, she was able to give prashad and she's, she's thinking that now how she wants to do it in the Damodar month. So it's all God's arrangement, isn't it? When, when there is will, there is way. So, yeah. And I'm looking forward, like all of you, to the start of Damodar month tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Absolutely. Yeah, if we have good desires, then sooner or later, they manifest. And it's, it is absolutely true. And I'm sure each of us have gone through that. We have some desire uh, in our mind, if not now, if not in a year, in a few years, you see that that desire man manifest. You know that's something that you wanted. Um, you know has has come in front of you. The opportunity has come in front of you. Then it's up to you to take it with both hands and make the best of it. So thank you all so much. Uh, let's do a couple of. Sorry, Prabhuji. Uh, can Mataji say something about Damodar Man to inspire us to do a bit more? Uh -huh. to strengthen, to strengthen uh -huh. our sadhana. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, uh, absolutely. I was, uh, I was uh, just uh, hearing. There was a very nice, uh, you know, discussion on if you follow Hare Krishna TV, there is a there's a program uh, comes Sidi uh, Bhat Prabhuji ke saath. It's a very uh, exalted uh, monk from, um, I think, is it Pune or Bombay, uh, Mumbai. He gives very nice questions. Uh, uh, answer questions at the end of the discussion and he will he was talking they were talking about Damodar month yesterday and he was saying that the nitty gritties of the fast is not that important you know that you have to do this much fast that much fast give up this give up that that has to be according to your job your situation your age and uh, what kind of services you are doing if somebody has got like you know very good preaching uh, service like that Prabhu, he was talking about himself. That he, he says, he, I can't do Bhisham Panchak, you know, strictly the last five days of uh, Damodar month. So he says, I just do the Ekadashi and the, for the following days, I, I don't follow that because my preaching suffers then. So the most important thing for us is, obviously, to remember Krishna uh, in our thoughts, in our, try to do nice chanting. If you've got Tulsi plant at home, do it by the Tulsi plant. If not, at least a picture of Tulsi, and uh, do the chanting nicely, do as much as you can, but has to be focused and try to avoid the mundane, you know, prajalpa, you know, like they say, the, the, the chit chat, which can be avoided, avoid that. And also, like you're saying, trying to do some cooking, distribute prashad in whichever way, even if you see homeless outside the supermarket or anywhere, just get some fruit or something just say Mahamantra and just give that to them instead of just, you know, giving some money or anything. So there are very subtle ways we can uh, remember Krishna throughout this month and uh, serve others and just just be, uh, just have some self-control on ourselves, you know, uh, try to wake up, wake up like we all do, wake up on time, have uh, our showers, do the chanting as much as we can in the morning. And just these little things, they are going to make Damodar happy. N not that, you know, we make big, big vows, which we can just follow for a day or two. And third day we say, oh, I can't follow that. But minds, our mind will say, no, you can't do that. So remembering Krishna, chanting for Krishna, trying to give prasad to Krishna, trying to let people who have never offered lamp to Damodar, just inspiring them, but not giving them deep, big, big philosophy. Because, you know, that scares people off, especially people who are not of, from our culture. And maybe some people from our culture, they also get scared when we tell them big, big things about, you know, Bhagwan. So just, just, just tell them, make a wish. And everybody wants to have, you know, everybody has a wish like we do on a birthday cake. So, yeah. So you can just, just have the Amodar in your life, not just for this month, for the rest of the year as well and for the rest of our lives. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's do a couple of rounds. Roshi Mataji and Praveen Mataji. Hare Krishna.